I'm Peggy Farron and we are live with the Understand Photography Show where we talk about travel and nature photography. Well, you know it's getting close to Christmas and if you're looking for holiday gifts, the best thing you can get either for yourself or for your budding photographer friend is the Four Weeks to Proficiency in Photography Online Virtual Boot Camp. And yes, I teach it. I teach it live. So it's a live class and it's going to give you a strong foundation in photography. It's great for beginners up until intermediate. It's a four week program, really, really good. And the next live class starts January 17th. The four weeks to proficiency in photography. You can find more information on our website at understandphotography.com. The best way to practice once you learn the basics is to come on a trip with us. We've got three short trips coming up for the end of the season. We've got one, uh, the Everglades in January. That's only got one spot left. Mount Dora, Florida, which is a ladies only trip because Mount Dora is a girly town. It's got all Victorian architecture and we stay in a cool bed and breakfast. We rent a boat and go through the chain of lakes. Really fun. That's in February. And then in May, Joe Fitzpatrick leads a trip to St. Augustine, Florida. So come with us. Our, our trips are limited to only five photographers, so you get a lot of individual attention. And again, the details are on understandphotography.com. Today's guest, this is episode number lucky 13, <laughs> today's guest is David Sussman. David, um, I met David through Facebook. Facebook is amazing, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But David is a media artist who has worked in virtually all aspects of multimedia design, including special effects and 2 and 3D animation. He's recognized as a master in the digital media field, and he's received numerous professional photography awards. He's amazing. I mean, I just started following him on Facebook, and I was, oh, I have to get this guy on my show. So welcome, David. Well, thank you. Oh. Glad to be here. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate the drive down. Yeah. Is, is it an hour and a half? Uh, or? No, it's a little over an hour, but so I come down here often anyway. Uh, sometimes I do shows uh, or participate, I should say, at the Lon Lie Big, and I have friends down here as well. Oh, cool. <laughs> welcome to Naples. <laughs> 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 All right, now, you... We were talking a little before the show started, and you have been a professional photographer for a long time. Yeah, I started in 1971. That is a long time. That is a very long time. Um, and you were a staff photographer, among other things. Yes. For a big company up in Maryland, right? Yes, uh, Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab. Wow, that sounds pretty technical. Uh, well, yeah, uh, it was amazing to be at the forefront of technology not only seeing what was going on in the world of technology, you know, scientists and so on and so forth, but it enabled me to get involved with the technical aspects in photography as well as many other fields. Okay. So now, you, did you start there as a photographer? Uh, that's a crazy story because I was just fresh out of high school and part-time job as a produce clerk. And I've always been a hard worker, and they kept saying, well, you know, we have a new store coming, and we want to make you our produce manager. <laughs> oh, a young kid working out in the country is like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be a manager. <laughs> uh, anyhow, my next-door neighbor saw how hard I worked around the house, and she goes, Dave, I can get you a job at Johns Hopkins. Back then, I didn't know who they were. I says, oh, who's wow. John? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, uh, luckily, I landed where? In the photo lab. Okay. Uh, for a facility of that type in 71, they did every aspect of photography you can imagine from... Um, uh, actually, my first job was operating a Xerox camera, if you ever heard of one of those. Uh, <laughs> you've heard of a Xerox machine, copying machine, it's electrostat. Well, it was the same process, but simplified down to um, a camera style thing. You actually had a big bellows camera, uh, a copy board that you put artwork up. You had this electrostatic plate that had a dark slide. You'd slide it in, you'd charge the plate, and you pull it, uh, just like you were exposing film, wow. and then when you were done, you would see a latent image on the plate, and then you would uh, put that over this tray and flip it over, and it had your toner and beads, and you would rock it back and forth, and you would see your final image. You wow. either put paper, or uh, it was some kind of view graph material, and tr transfer and that's, it. That's, that was how you started. That's how I started. Now, yeah. did you take formal 
uh, photography classes too? That's the cool thing. No, never. So anyone that well, wants you can't to get never. into photography uh, and be proficient and growth and all that, you can do it without a tricky question or tricky answer. I should say without formal education, you can do it, but it does require quite a bit of uh, personal studies and sacrifice right. of your own. You know what I find because now I've been teaching for seven years. Technical people they like to study and they like to read books and they like to figure things out but there are more people like me who we want somebody to show us how to do it you know and just show me how come on make it easier for me so i'm lucky because joe fitzpatrick who well, works closely he's the techie guy and i'm more and, of and back then it was even a little more difficult because you just couldn't go to the internet and look up hey i want to learn how to do portraits it didn't work that way. Oh, you actually no, I bought know. books. You couldn't do it even if when I started. If you weren't going to school, you bought books. However, after you, I got to a certain point, I did convince management to start sending us to a place called Winona. Uh -huh. It was an international school of professional photography in Chicago okay. that unfortunately no longer exists. Yeah, I was, I'm not familiar with yeah, that way. <laughs> you do, and it's so disappointing because I became a, an instructor after so many years. They saw what I was doing in special effects and they were mainly a um, portrait kind of education right and they want they saw digital was starting to approach and they saw the need to make some kind of change oh, they didn't survive that's too bad yeah. digital digital photography killed off a lot of photography companies and a lot of yeah. photographers in, in my area I'm one of the very few who made it through that <laughs> little transition and well, it was a painful transition the crazy thing I was the person at Johns Hopkins forcing the transition. Uh -huh. Here we had a full service photo lab. We processed E4, you know, slide film, right. color negatives. We printed our own uh, uh, color, black and white, infrared, you name it, we did it all. Here it is, enter the digital age. And uh, I convinced the powers to be to get me a Mac II. That was the first Mac for, for graphic artists uh -huh. and Photoshop. Photoshop one. Oh my god. <laughs> I think I started on five. Photoshop five. Yeah, but still, that's a lot of experience in Photoshop. But anyhow, here, here it is. Uh, uh, at that date, we had somewhere around 500,000 film negatives in, that have been saved, archived. And here we need some kind of input. Back mm -hmm. then, a two megapixel camera made by Kodak was like 15 grand. <laughs> and the resolution sucks. Yeah, I know. It, poor. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I got a, a, a vendor, Leaf. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Yeah. Back in the day, they were the top film uh, scanner uh, okay. company, but it was like a $60,000, $50,000 scanner. Our place wasn't ready to buy it, so I convinced them to loan it to me for a year on the basis that I could convince management to buy this. Oh, so here wow. I had all those resources. Now I had a way wow. to digitize it. And we just, uh, uh, from there, it grew into something that was called Digital Imaging Lab that I headed up and developed and moved forward with. It. Wow. And we did everything from uh, web, 3D, multimedia, interactive, you name it. So now you, you said that you got into special effects even actually, in before film? that, even in uh, film, uh, I was actually uh, uh, was one of the early folks producing special effects in stills. Okay. Uh, and what encouraged me was uh, the movie Star Wars. I think came out in 1977. I saw this and I was like, "Well, why can't you do that in stills?" Ah. Well, I had already dis developed a style, if you will, for doing. Uh, uh, here you have scientist labs. You go into a lab and you see their lab is just filled with technical wires and right. it just looked really poor and uh, I came up with a method of colorizing the lab by using a flash bare bulb putting a cone of some colored gel mm -hmm. and would flood the room of all their junk and it be hidden in plain sight so ah. here you have something that was either all green all red whatever and then spotlight just the people in white and this you did in film. And I did that in film, and that led into what ca what else can I do? And that's when I started doing multiple exposures on a single sheet of film. Okay. Uh, and that, that, that in itself led uh, into one thing to the next. Uh, it, it was very challenging. I was using a 4x5 uh, studio camera, 
and I added a third standard. You would have the front that held the lens and mm -hmm. the back that held the film. Right. I needed a third one so I could slide things to the controlled light from exposing other areas oh. of film. And I've been known to expose as many as 100 exposures, exposures onto a single sheet of film. Oh my God. Now the downside of this, it could take up to a month to come up with a concept. So you had to have a plan. You had to detail everything out because this is something you're building. You shoot um, your element, you would draw it on the ground glass roughly where it went, and then you put the film back in the freezer so it wouldn't degrade over a period of time. Wow. Uh, and that eventually led into other things. I, that's when I had my, uh, what I like to call my first peak. Oh my uh, It God. caught the attention of professional photographers of America, of Winona, Kodak. I was sponsored by Kodak for a few years because of that. Oh, wow. uh, I actually exhibited at an Epcot Center in something called Journey into Imagination or something of those oh lines. Oh my gosh. Uh, and it was all because of the special effects things. And if I go back today and look what I loved and really mm -hmm. thought was cool, it looks like. It looks amateurish oh, now, yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but now with the digital, we can do so much more, yeah. right? Indeed. That's amazing, Indeed. though. Well, that's, I think, when I started looking at your work, I'm like, oh my gosh, you have such a creative mind. <laughs> I mean, that's something, you know, I mean, just to come up with that kind of ideas, and I want to talk about that a little bit more. Um, let's see. So, you had talked to me about pre-visualizing, okay? And you just said that okay, again, right, that right. you planned all this out. So do you have like well, a that, process? That, that, that was the beginning of the need to uh, uh, pre-visualize. It was mandated because of the kind of work I was getting into. And basically what I did back then was, I can't draw. I'm not an artist I of that nature. I can't draw either. <laughs> I had stick figures. Yeah. So here I had to use my imagination even for what that stick meant. But from there, I could imagine where the lights were coming from, what other elements I wanted to add it compositionally, and then was it conveying a message to the overall thing, did things match, and so on and so forth. L okay, well let me, okay, so one picture that I was very impressed by that you posted on Facebook recently was this just this building, just a big rectangular building, nothing special. Right. And so one of the things I like about following you on Facebook is you explain how you do things too. Yeah. Um, and so you had ever you had a you took it at I think twilight maybe, most likely, and you had them turn on all the lights in the whole building. So you added interest right, right there. Right. But the cool thing that you did was you had a car, oh, an okay. S curve, streaking lights in the okay. front. That and and we're gonna I'm gonna find that picture and put it on our website. We're gonna <laughs> link on, on understandphotography.com. We're gonna link to David's website in the show notes. But I'm going to find that picture and put it on <laughs> our site because it's so creative. It's just, and it's not even that hard to do. It well, just was such a brilliant idea. I, I had gotten to the point, well, I had finally gotten to the point where I was getting very imaginative with things. And I also like to create things that others don't. And it's not because they can't, it's just they, they don't, don't see, think of it. They don't think of it. So here it is. Uh, that was my Johns Hopkins days, actually. And, Somebody wanted a real creative image of what they called Building 7. It was a personnel building. I looked at it and I go, really? Do you want something creative of that? So here I'm going, well, what can I do? And I got into the point where I was able to talk them into many things. But I had a security guard before twilight turn on every light in the building, pull the blinds just so, so it wasn't blaring out at anyone. And oh. this was done, that one was done on film. You're and kidding no, me. No, oh and my God. I, I had done enough Twilight photos. I had already known the exposures I was going to use, right. and that was like a 15-second, maybe 25-second exposure. Too long ago to really know. And then I had somebody drive a car with not the headlights on, but just the uh, running lights and taillights, and they ran around twice, and here you left with this really cool image. But did you tell them to drive in an S-curve, or yep. was, it, well, that was, was the, that the driveway? Uh, that was the drive that went. <laughs> so cool, man. <laughs> yeah, I was. And did they sh just stop, or did they shut off the lights when the, when the lights uh, the stopped? The lens closed. Or it was just time to end uh, the picture. Okay. Other things I did of that nature, and, and, and this is part of the pre-visualization thing, is trying to give a view that 
others don't see. Back then, you wouldn't necessarily take the camera out in the rain, and uh, they wanted, again, another building shot, twilight. They wanted something interesting of their, what I think it's called the Gibson Library so long ago. Uh, but I had the fire trucks come out and literally hose down the road so I could get that glare off the road in front of that building. Turned out really nice. Then, and it was a nice twilight, not a rainy one. Oh so you had that nice gosh. saturated blue, the normal lights with all the reflections. Now, how do the, you get the fire truck? Do you just pay them? Is that what they? Oh, no. They, uh, uh, the Applied Physics Lab is a very big entity on uh, shoot, 365 acres. They had their own, all these they experiments going on. Room. They oh. have to have a fire truck or a firehouse. Wow. So I look at all the all the things they have available and I would come up with new ways of utilizing. And do you think you can learn to be creative? I mean, uh, you're blowing my mind with just, we only talked about two pictures. <laughs> uh, well, I, 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 I have had this argument with other supervisors. I, I, I don't understand why you can't. Uh, and it all begins with one, if you have a love to photography, that's going to become part of your drive. I, yeah. Uh, first learn composition. If you're into really cool, you need to know composition. You know it as a portrait photographer, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, uh, just, that's the second. Just a placement of hands right. and background. That's, the, that's and the second class in our four weeks to proficiency, by, <laughs> it, by the way, because it's, you know, uh, and I don't know if you're involved in judging, but I yep. judge a lot yep. of photography yep. competitions. and Absolutely. People really don't understand composition and how important it is, you know. There's, there's a, and what, you know, I've had some real arrogant people, oh, I don't follow the rules, I am a creative, <laughs> well, okay, but, you well, know, the reason those rules are there is because somebody studied what our eyes like to look at. Rules are meant to be broken. It's not 100%, as you well know. Right. Uh, but I, I believe the biggest problem people have in photography is relating to a 3D environment in a fraction of a second um. to a 2D environment, and it's the 2D environment that we're looking for the compositional element. Good point. Okay? Yeah. So uh, you learn things like that, and it's going to help you move forward. Look, uh, uh, and I can't help it, in life I go down the street and I see things constantly. Yeah. It just pops in my head. Uh, not just the compositional elements, forget the lighting. Forget how all that, how it's going to be shot. First, identify, see the composition, okay. then go from there. Okay, that's good. I like that. And then let's talk about light. Okay, so then what? So do you think, okay, this building would look better at night, or do you think, you know, you know, I'm going to, what do you think about the light? Well, if you're uh, taking uh, a picture, let's just say of a building again. Lighting is a major tool for me in, 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 in almost every endeavor I do uh, because it will, uh, okay, another problem in photography is having too much clutter. With light, you can hide it by not illuminating it oh. or making sure to use some kind of gobo or whatever to subtract it and so on and so forth. Okay. I, I use a lot of what they call light modifiers. You've uh -huh. got them here in your studio with uh, light boxes, but there's umbrellas and beauty dishes and spotlights. And uh, uh, if you're not using those kind of lights and you're using natural light, you've got the big scrims, the translucent thing to also control light. Right. And this is how you move forward with becoming more creative. And as you see it working for you, you start, you know, I, I hate using the word style, but you're going to create your own kind of style or, or niche, uh -huh, if you uh -huh. will. And now, do you work with gels and a lot? Oh my God, yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, now, nowadays, I do a lot of architectural photography for realtors. And it's a tough area because they expect a lot but you go into an environment and I can go in and I see yellow light I see green light I see blue light I, I've, I've trained myself to know that these are the colors you can actually see it but our mind automatically yeah we that. right so whether it's just trying to color balance things or actually introducing new light I prefer introducing new colors to my scene because nobody else is it gives me that one little extra niche, if you will. So, like, if you're doing a real estate shoot, which, by the way, my guest next week is a architectural photographer, <laughs> um, but you would, let's say you're doing a fancy house with a beautiful living room, you would actually add, like, some red ambient light or something? or uh, With architecture, I'm more into 
Uh, well, I like using a uh, uh, shooting near twilight myself, and then I, it depends on the home, I'll turn all the lights on and look to see what are lights that, that I'm going to have to battle, and then I'll use a simple uh, fill light from a flash. Okay. Uh, I don't introduce any new color, uh, or actually if I go into a room and I see that it's all tungsten, I, it's like, oh, thank you, because then all I have to do is add on a little uh, yellow filter and it will balance with that, and I just take it all out during a post or post process. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, but what I really enjoy is when I make up an environment, and you, you actually used one of those pictures for your uh, advertising of me being here, and that's where I went into Sandman Bookstore. And those bookstore pictures were amazing. Well, they, they had an incredible environment. If you, if uh, they're, they're just outside of Burnt Shore. Um, uh, I have to go there. Of, it looks so cool. It, it's very cool. Uh, this gal's husband built an archway made out of books. He got something like five, ten thousand books that builds these archways. And I looked at it and I says, I got to come in here oh and shoot something. Gosh. And it turned out the gal that runs it, she's uh, an artist herself in doing clothing costumes um, because didn't you had some lady like an uh, like an octopus or yeah, something right exactly. <laughs> she, she she designs and manufactures this stuff and and then they also do uh they they've got a wonderful thing for kids where they're doing a uh, storybook storybook reading of uh, of one thing or another and they all get dressed up and they have this one guy mm -hmm. that's great at reading and these kids and they're very interactive with the kids but anyhow it, it was such a unique environment. I knew I could do a lot there. So you approached her. I approached her. Or them. I think I see. it's hard to say. And say said this this store is amazing. I would like to do a photo shoot. And then you were well, somehow with it. we we just collaborated on something. She she mentioned to me at some point that she does the costumes. We went down there and maybe I got better charged when I realized she was the designer of these yeah, costumes. Yeah. I, I just. Don't recall how it all So worked. how did you come up with the concept of the, of the photo shoot? Well, I saw several pictures, and they right. were amazing. So you had well, here, different lights here, all over well, the place. Well, I, I, I saw this archway. Uh, it, it's basically one big room, but you have all these rows of different types of books positioned different ways, and then this archway. And I saw immediately... I could use these items as a means for controlling my lights. Okay. I had up to three, four different colors on some of these shoots. I mean, brilliant, vibrant blues, oranges. Uh, and uh, are they just on speed lights, or are they? I use I use tiny little yeah speed lights. Little speed lights, yeah. and you just uh, put gel. You just gel yeah, over just the speed gel. lights. Yeah. And you just position yeah. them to yeah. shoot like I, I want mean, yellow uh, over one, here. One of my main lights I always use. Uh, that symbolizes dark but illuminates and a lot of my ideas comes from just watching TV believe it or not oh. we'll come back to that is what represent what color represents night blue, blue. okay there's a beginning <laughs> so I start with designing my my nightfall if you will and uh -huh. I'll pop a blue gel light to the ceiling which watches washes the scene scene but not with real intensity but the shadows will definitely come out this nice saturated blue and then I start adding other lights you know I have a more intense orange light popping through the archway uh, so it gives a little mystery and emotion stirring and I always with uh, almost everything that I do or when I'm using this colorized theme if you will is I take one spotlight that goes on a human uh -huh. subject to bring reality Wow, so that's normal coloring. That's normal coloring, oh. right. So in a way, it's painting with light. That's one of the many means that I use the terminology of painting with light. Wow, that is, that, that bookstore shoot was amazing. Now, is that on your website? Uh, that is on the, the Facebook site. Okay. Uh, and lately, your Facebook I, is facebook.com slash David Sussman, or is it a business yeah, page or a personal I, I page? have both, uh, but the Facebook business, I've kind of let go. And I know, there's might so much to keep up with. It, ah. it, 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 it's not really served me the same value as uh, doing a personalized Personal, version. Yeah. But then again, my target audience, if you will, are the locals in Punta Gorda. Yeah. I, I'm really photographing items that they can relate to, and so I've built up a little bit of an audience. For so that. let's let's back up because you've only been okay. So you work for big companies, mm -hmm. and then you've moved to Florida, 
blah, blah, blah. I'm going to cut through a lot yeah, of your yeah, life. Yeah. And then you've been in Punta Gorda for three years. Yes. So you had to start completely from scratch. Yes. yes. Okay, so, so tell us, what did you do? Okay, well, you know, I've always been, well, I'm a uh, web developer as well. I know a lot about SEO, okay. and this is going around the barn a little bit to get to what you want to talk okay. about. <laughs> uh, so I know how to design pages and whatnot, so it optimizes so people search for that, they find me in Punta Gorda. It used to be optimized for Panama City. Um, and, and this wasn't really working efficiently for a smaller community. I mean, I think uh, Punta Gorda is like 20,000 in the summer. Small, I know. And 40,000 is their growth explosion yeah, during the very big. snowbirds. <laughs> and it's like, okay, I got to do something better in this. And I started playing around with Facebook, uh, 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 the personal site, and realized, you know, you do a few postings and you see what's good and what's bad. And I started doing some historic things and just general scenes around town. Okay. And uh, you'd be amazed at the number of people that notice. It got me a article in um, Harbor Style Magazine. That's their big, high-profile magazine. Okay, okay. Um, it's gotten me a lot of exposure with the local magazines, and it just snowballed into a uh, quite the. Uh, I have people responding or asking me to do more postings because that's the first thing they do in the morning. They want to read what. What, what have I done for Punta Gorda lately? That I guess. is so <laughs> cool. You know, it's funny. I have a friend in Orlando or Sanford, Florida, who pretty much same thing. Yeah. So it's a great marketing strategy. It is, but just like any strategy, you have to figure out how that will work in the area you're at. And my biggest suggestion is you keep it local. Don't worry about exposure elsewhere. Keep it local and something that will interest the majority. Yeah. And Punta Gorda, actually, they're in love with their sunsets. Oh. Okay, they're right on the edge of the harbor. Uh -huh. So I first started doing sunsets, and then I realized everybody's doing sunsets. Exactly. And it's like, oh, I can't keep going. I, 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 I apologize. I'm tired of doing sunsets. <laughs> well, you know, For any of you that are watching, I love them, but everybody does them, and I, I like doing something a little different is all. So then I started picking up on uh, some of their, they have a lot of history there, a lot of historic yeah, buildings. Yeah, they've got some old cool buildings. Yeah, so I started doing uh, some painting with light, where if I have a more dark area, I'll actually take a high power flashlight, uh -huh. open up the shutter, and start painting in my objects with light. Now when you do that, I've only done it once, okay? I've only done it once where it worked, ah. okay? <laughs> What, we were photographing it. It was a commercial job, and they had these, you know, people coming off this private jet. And so I asked the guy who owned the jet, could I stay and practice with my buddy, you know? So we, we had these big flashlights, and we, <laughs> we sh you know, but it's hard to get it even, the lighting even. Uh, is it, it, it does take a little practice. There's all kinds of flashlights. The more powerful ones actually have a tight beam and a very soft a uh, 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 angle coming off and you might get confused where that tight beam is and I'll use I, I've got a good grief I hope my wife's not watching <laughs> I actually have a suitcase full of different types of uh, flashlights really flashlights can get expensive though right they can get very expensive like you can spend two hundred dollars <laughs> on a flashlight easily uh, right more than that <laughs> more than two hundred dollars yeah. on a flashlight oh, again honey I hope you're not watching <laughs> And she just went shopping, and he told her not <laughs> to keep spend too much money. <laughs> uh, but I actually learned painting with light technique. It's a very old technique. Yeah, I knew it was an old technique, uh, but I've 40s, only tried it. 40s, 50s, 60s. Actually, my mentor, oh my gosh, one of my first, it might have been my first commercial job. I had done a lot of weddings at this uh, fancy hotel here. And they said, well, we hired an architectural photographer, and they did a terrible job in the gym, the workout mm -hmm. room. And she said, you want to give it a shot? I'll give you whatever. She gave me, I think, credit for the, the restaurant or something. And I was like, yeah, yeah, because I was eager, you know. Oh, my gosh. It was mirrors and black oh. walls. And, <laughs> and I called my mentor, Sarah. I don't know what to do. And she came in with a flashlight, and she just, and that was film back yeah, then. I, I, she knew, she knew exactly what to do and saved my butt like she did many times. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cute. I actually first learned that uh, early days in Johns Hopkins because there were some 
experiments that were done in what they called the Butler buildings, and they were always dimly lit, and they were the green fluorescence and other things going on. So I would go in with a Smith and Victor single light. It was a, basically a bulb and a reflector. Mm -hmm. Had them turn all the lights out, and I'd be going like this. It gave a very broad, but that was hooked up to electric. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Soon after that, I learned how to do it with flash, where you go pop, pop, and walk around. I've done as large as a 500 yards worth of buildings. And back during the days where you had the Lumdines, I don't know what they have anymore. The Lumdines? Yeah. yeah. And, and they, they would put out a maximum 1,200 watt seconds. And I sent somebody down at the pond so I get the reflection of the pond oh in it. Oh my And God. we're communicating by radio. I c open the shutter, poof, and then I walk 50 feet. Okay, open the shutter. And it actually, you just you did the dark slide. And we did that for four buildings. It turned out wow. really cool. So a yes. lot of techniques learned because of industrial f industrial photography is really my base. You need to learn a lot to be able to survive in an entity of that sort. It's funny because I, I feel like I'm pretty good at lighting, but you're like making me feel really insecure. <laughs> like, oh my know. God, I don't know how to do that either. <laughs> I mean, of course I've heard of people doing it, but I've never done that at all. Well, you excel in portraiture where I do okay. Okay, I'm not going to say I'm the best portraiture. I do very good portraitures, but I'm sure you do much better than I because you concentrate at different right. elements it's that I'm not really concerned about as much as but you. But now I want to try all this cool <laughs> stuff. One of the best things about having a training center is that you get to try. Well, you don't get to. You, you have to yeah. because I have to learn a lot of stuff that I, that I never had to before. I really got taken out way out of my comfort zone, that's for sure. But, when, when but it it's more fun. But when it comes to painting with light, one of the most fun things, and you don't need a lot of space for it, and it requires nothing more than a flashlight, and I wish I could remember the brand. Uh, I if you remind me, I'll tell you later. And that's where you take a uh, just small thing. It could be a vase with roses and whatnot. And you first paint just with white light uh -huh. to get the roses come in. But this device has these things that you cl clamp into it that just by rubber and friction it holds there. And I've got these wands and plexiglass blades that are like this. And the light really emits from where they've been cut. I've got fiber optic strings that come out here, and you get behind it. And my flashlight has red, green, blue, and I just turn it, and I wave it around. Then I change the component, and I put a different one on, and I wave it around. And you get these crazy designs. And the flashlight has all these things that you said? Uh, well, it's a rubber gizmo that hooks to your flashlight, oh. and then has all these accessories. I want one of those. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it'd be a fun course. To, to teach and it's one very easy. I actually went one of the coolest things I did and it, again I just like playing around with this stuff is I, I wanted to do a ghost kind of thing. Okay. So here it is I'm in my garage my uh, digital dark room is right next to it single door in and out and I took all the cars out of the garage and I just took this light and waved it around uh, 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 and, and you could see because of the length of time you can barely see me and then I just turned all the lights out. The lights are on in my studio. Okay. And I just open the door and close it real quick. And you see this head kind of sitting there. And it, it's you'd have to see. Does uh, it look yeah. creepy cool? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the cool things. Is it on you your Facebook try. page? It probably is. Okay. I'm sure it is. And our, the Facebook is facebook.com slash David Sussman? Or? It's David Sussman. Yeah, okay. if you do DW Sussman Photography, you'll go to my commercial Facebook site, which I... Is not as updated. Uh, yeah, I don't right. update okay. that as much. Yeah. It's hard to keep up with all the <sighs> social media, I'll tell you what. Now, are you using hashtags and everything like that? Do you hashtag Punta Gorda? And no. Nah, no. Nah, no. I Facebook, I Facebook, you can search for hashtags on Facebook, but it's not like Instagram. That's where the ha and, I and tend Twitter, to stay that's where. It took me forever to do Facebook because I was doing web development and just plain create at my own sites. Yeah. Content management sites, all this stuff, and Facebook was just like, oh, come on, please. One more thing to do on the yeah. computer, right? And then <laughs> finally I realized Facebook is a very big tool, so I started using it. And then people started saying, well, when are you going to do Flickr? Or when are you going to do I know. this? And when are you going to do Twitter? It's like, I can't. You one can't person. do everything. I know. That's Pick one. We, have all the, we all have the same problem. Yeah. In fact, I, I got 
you know, as I, as I get busier and have a little more money, thank God, <laughs> I have a virtual assistant now, <laughs> Ashley, <Yay>. who, <laughs> she does a lot of that stuff for me yeah. at this point because I can't do everything, you know? Well, and, and that's really working by myself. You know, I, I was able to enlist my wife to be my business manager because seriously, if you're going to get out there and really want to make money, you can't be the artist and then turn around and be the business person. It's way too much. It's hard. And uh, uh, she's done marvelous. She, she, yeah. she can chase after things that I don't even think. I am. I have envy because I've been, <laughs> I've been alone, pretty much my whole life. Uh, yeah. And uh, all those husband-wife teams. I'm like, man. Yeah. You got yeah. like a fifty thousand, sixty thousand dollar a year helper for nothing. Uh, <laughs> shit, man, I hope you're not watching. <laughs> I didn't say it. She did. Ah. <laughs> All right. So you got a lot of ideas. What about editing? Uh, there's only one editing tool I use uh, it, for stills. And, of course, it's Photoshop. I started with Photoshop when it was one. One. And I'm now, I'm what, so 2017? Uh, but really... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, they changed it now. That's what they're calling it by the yeah, year now, I have the premiere or whatever it is, the, the whole... Gambit oh, the, because I do all that stuff. The $50 stuff. a month thing uh, you, program, right? Well, you pay for it all at once and it's cheap. Oh, I didn't if know. If you that. pay the monthly fee, it's. It's 50 Yeah, it's quite for a For the more. whole suite. Yeah, for the whole suite. I just have um, the photography program, it's $10 a month. But I also use uh, Lightroom, okay? And uh, Lightroom used to be more of a cataloging software. And uh, at, at when I finally said, okay, I gotta look into not. Lightroom, they turned it into more of a Photoshop light thing. It's yeah. like, no, nah, it's not the same. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, if you want absolute control, Photoshop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Truly. Um, I, do, I, I have a love-hate relationship with Lightroom, but it is good for culling and sorting and doing minor editing. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. then it's nice yeah. for tagging because you can tag one, 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 one and say, okay, all the ones I'm going to bring into Photoshop well, to can, do the real you work. You can do that in Bridge. That's true, you can. Okay. Uh, for those that don't know, if you have Photoshop, you also have Bridge, yeah. Adobe Bridge, which is called uh, Lightroom Light. It's yeah. more of a cataloging thing, sort of. Uh, you can prioritize what you're going to use. True, you, can. you can batch process, which is really cool. I do a lot of batch processing okay. in, in uh, using that, okay. whereas before we used to use Action, and it's before that, what was we use a separate application before all that that talked to Photoshop to automate it to do oh, things. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was before my time. We did actions well, when you. I started. <laughs> 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 well, 1971. Oh, yeah, yeah. You yeah. might be a few, a few yeah, years yeah, older. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you, um, do you use any of the plugins and all those kind of cool things? Uh, I've used plugins, uh, but I tend to shy away from them. Uh, uh, there are ways of using plugins, and I'll suggest one. And if you use a plugin, it most of the time when I look at anything that's been done with a plugin, it looks like it. Yeah. So put it in a layer, knock down the translucent, uh, you know, uh, make it less opaque, and maybe use one of the uh, uh, um, layer styles. I forget what they call that. Whether it's uh, uh, using color, luminosity, and so on. Right. And and. Use it in that manner, and you'll get something that's a whole lot more realistic. Yeah. But again, plugins, uh, I call that push button photography. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I, I, I don't, I, well, the one plugin that I love is for, it's called Portraiture. It's by Image oh, Nomic. Okay. That's something that, that's yeah. my favorite plugin because you just, you just hit like, go to filters, but hit it, and then it smooths out the skin. I like that. <laughs> but that but I have See, I'm, all these I'm other plugins. I never what, what, use them. What's cool about doing it yourself is almost the same thing. You guys, you really need to get into layers if you're not, if you're using Photoshop. Because I'll actually build multiple layers to take out wrinkles and so on. And then every once in a while, you get the client that goes, oh, I look way too young. I says, well, come here. Slide yeah, the transparency yeah. and all. <laughs> and they go, that's it right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I do that a lot because I'll I'll be in there and I'll be <laughs> editing and then I'll I'll zoom out and I'll go, oh my god, I over edited that. That looks terrible. Exactly. So I just bring the exactly. opacity and down and of the that, layer. That often is with me as well. Yeah. you get a little you get a little crazed. carried away. <laughs> 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 okay, so now you've had a long career, and it sounds like you do this as a passion as well as a career. It's always been a passion, yeah. So do you have like one photo that you're proud of, the most proud of, or a I couple? I hate to say this, the last photo taken. 
Ah. Uh, my wife is really frustrated with me because when we first got together, she opened up this drawer of stuff. She goes, oh my God, where'd you get all this wildlife stuff? This is great. Or, or one, you oh, know, yeah, I've never keeps, seen any wildlife she, stuff out of you. Yeah, every once in a while. <laughs> uh, she just keeps coming with this stuff and it's, it's old stuff. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll try to chase down something. I'm very proud of it for a week to maybe even a month or two. And I'm moving on to the next image. Wow. I, I just... You get bored quickly. Yes. Very and quickly. that shows in your creativity and all your work <laughs> because you've got so much different cool stuff. Uh, I know some of the pictures I looked at you you were working with like how to actually you wrote up a tutorial I think about how to work with make laser beams in your pictures or something. Uh, yeah, well, it's not make up laser beam. Uh, we're going back a few years again okay. to Johns Hopkins and basic science, a lot of the physical science or uh, uh, get the name of it, we'll use lasers and stuff. And it's a focus beam. You can't just point a camera to it, photograph and go, look, there's the beams. Yeah. They're almost unseen. Uh -huh. And I came up with my own method for doing that, of course. So, you know, people have used smoke and all these other weird things. And what I did is I took a piece of mylar and I just cut it out, white mylar, uh, that, okay. and I used that to interrupt the beam. And I would trace that beam in and it would see the light from the laser at any one point being red uh, and and as you move it just like with a flashlight painting in a subject i'm painting in that whole line i, keep I don't going think back i understand okay so if i'm let's say i'm shooting just, a beam right at right, you you're shooting a beam at me uh -huh. okay where's you can't the mylar really going? see it okay and okay. where's the camera the camera's over there over there okay you really can't see so this you can't beam. see this right okay so you would take this white mylar uh -huh. it's white plastic basically that you, you can't see through but it transmits light uh -huh. and i would take it's just a sliver and i would put it on that beam so right here it, it's at an angle but the camera can see that point and i just move it back and forth between the beam and that beam after you do it long enough would show because it's showing that red light the intense point where it's hitting that um mm -hmm. uh, a piece of mylar you could use paper but why I use mylar is it sh a, a strong beam will actually show through it. So if all of a sudden I had to turn like this, it's still seeing that so point of light. So is your hand in the shot then? If oh, you're, yeah, So absolutely. you just have to Photoshop it out. It doesn't matter. No. no. Oh, because you're this, moving and it's yeah. a slow shutter speed. Yeah. You're just disappearing. Oh, I've let that part out. Yeah, these often would be 30, 40 second, up ah. to a minute exposure, depending on how complex. So like if I was uh, shooting a beam at something, you'd be like right there just doing yeah, that with it's the total dark i forgot oh to mention that gosh. right okay. okay you know and uh and, and then i would also take a couple of spotlights once it's all said and done and they're all set up and ready and to fill in faces you just and pop, equipment. pop yeah. them with a with a strobe yeah oh, multiple okay. strobes usually oh wow and i i guess one of the yeah. ones that i'm most proud of was at the hydrodynamics lab and here they have these water tanks and they did uh uh fluid studies and stuff, put dyes and watch how it disappears and they had a laser beam set up and it would point into the tank and they get these readings. Okay. But the lab looked really... Ugly? Yeah, it looked like some sanitation uh, kind of thing. Oh, right? oh yeah, yeah, And yeah. that's where I came up with the coloring with light. Uh, they wanted to see the whole tank. Well, I had to hide all their clutter. So I washed it in a green light. Why green? I, I thought it symbolized water. It, it worked, <laughs> and then because there's a laser beam, I says, well, I need to have some red uh, rim light, which were spotlights, and then, of course, the white light was also spotlight. And wow. back in those days, I had to take a whole studio with me. They didn't have these little lights that worked that well. Now you could do that with speed lights, right? Yes, I do everything with speed lights. How many speed lights do you own? <laughs> Six. Six? Six. How many flashlights? I Probably five. <laughs> wow. And actually, I've got more than that. Now, I also have uh, uh, studio lights if I need more power. Because yeah. the speed light, I don't know what the watt second is, but it's not that high. Right. Um, but they often work. With today's camera, you can really crank the ISO up and they work well without getting too much uh, uh, noise or artifacts or whatever you want to call it. You have me things. so inspired to go out and try to do things with a bunch of different lights and gels and I just coming up with the ideas is what 
I still. Well, it's all about well, you know, er, early in in uh, at, at Hopkins, I, I was you know they, they took to me very well because I was doing all these crazy things, great for marketing, um, and and they would buy me a lot of gizmos upon request, and I had things like a rear screen projection unit. Okay. Okay. Basically, it was a projector mounted this way, and then there was a beam splitter sitting like this, so the light would project whatever you put a slide in it and it would project a photo onto this retro activated, uh, retro reflective beaded screen. And it would intensify the light back okay. like a thousand times, 10,000, whatever. Same kind of beads you see in the uh, interstate, interstate where you see the signs and your headlights hit it and reflects back right. more oh, intense. Okay. But, and then I would put a, position, a person in between it with strong strobes and the two would mix seamlessly. So I was doing instant, take somebody and put them anywhere I wanted. Whatever that slide was. You could of put course them in Rome a, or something <laughs> yeah, like that. Of course, being a young male back then, the first thing I would do is grab some guy, come on over here, you know, I want to do you on the beach. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now is that, there's some, oh, what is the now, name of the now, company, that a big company that was selling, it was like $10,000 for the kit. Was that, is that what the probably, same thing? Yeah, probably was. What the heck is that but, called? My friend Charlie <sighs> has that. Oh, still has it? Wow. Well, he bought it probably 10 years ago, I okay. guess. I remember he drove up to Atlanta because he got it for half price. He I got it yeah, used. Yeah, he yeah, drove yeah, up yeah. to Atlanta to get it. And uh, gosh, it's going to drive me crazy. We're going to find it out and put it in the show here's notes. Here's a good tip. But, it's a, but he, can, he still has it, and he's got like a studio at his home. And he has it set up, and he can put all kinds of stuff, like all kinds of scenes behind the yep, person. Yep, yep. But they can't it, get the feet in the He's not doing a green pictures. screen. He's actually doing something more... It's that same technology yeah, with yeah, that rear. Okay. Yeah, rear screen projection, or not rear screen, that's a different technology. It's front screen projection. Okay, because he takes the picture, boom, and he's done. Whatever slide, no and they probably work digitally now, I assume, so he can just project whatever onto the background. Mm -hmm. And because it's low intensity getting to the screen, you don't see anything. It hits you, yeah, but you're using high power flash right and it's washing all that out even if it did show and the beaded screen is like a 10,000 times intensity return okay so the two you That's did have to learn it. the right you know the balance but once you had that figured out it was a piece of cake it's gonna drive me crazy now. <laughs> uh, uh, but you know working at Hopkins that 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 turned me on to the next thing I started doing was working with beam splitters and a beam splitter is nothing more than a sheet of glass with different reflectivity on one side, and you know, uh, might be 30, 70, uh, and that's basically how you did that too, because uh, you would have a higher percent of reflectivity for the slide to be projected, and less so the camera could see through it. So anyhow, you can use a simple plate of glass to photograph the best way to light a coin is with a simple sheet of glass. And you basically will have your coin sitting there. It requires your camera to be on a tripod to be looking straight down. And you would take this glass and slant it 45. Camera's looking straight down and sees through the glass the coin. And then you coming whichever way, this way, with your light, be a flash, and it reflects down, gives you perfect light. Okay, hold on. I, I got to make sure I understand that. Okay, so this is the table. And here's a, because I don't think our table shows in, this, in the thing. Oh. So the coin there's goes on coin, the table. Here's your piece of glass, and here's your uh, camera. And where's the light? The light's heading this way, reflecting down. The camera's looking through it. Ah, so the light's And now coming. You, you can actually, if you're using uh, uh, incandescent light, you know, full-time light, you can actually move this up and back and see exactly what kind of light you're getting. Wow. And you can get the most beautiful lighting for coins, jewelry, and so on with just... Take just a regular piece of glass. A regular piece of glass. Now, a regular piece of glass does require you to keep light from spilling onto the camera lens and things like that, but it's not that difficult. So you could just like take a piece of glass out of a eight by ten frame mm -hmm. and try that. At, mm -hmm. Try that at home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's again, uh, and that works. It works beautifully. It really that's does. That's so cool. Uh, All right, take your notes again because now I want you to talk <laughs> about um, tips. 
Give us some tips. Oh, Lordy, my first tip in today's technology, if you're not shooting raw, you're not taking advantage of the camera. Oh. Okay, and I, I'm sure you do. I do, yes. but why do you say that? Okay, it's because of latitude and interpretation of what you've seen. If you want to be creative, do you want some camera, the firmware, the firmware to tell you what that's going to look like? Not only that, if you're shooting JPEG, how much information are you throwing away? Mm -hmm. The camera has, uh, uh, most cameras will have anywhere from 6 to 10 f-stop latitude. That's how much information across right. intensity of light it'll gather. JPEG throws it all away. Yep. TIFF throws away less, but it still throws a lot away. Right. You want to maintain every bit of that information you can uh, before going to... Uh, I typically, on an average shoot, will shoot at least, okay, uh, watching histograms too, because I shoot typically one f-stop under my highlights. Okay. And I, I don't know if you can explain it better than that, but if you look at your highlights, I never want that to be clipped, mm -hmm. because that's throwing information away. So it, what you're saying is if you're looking at the histogram, you don't want anything crawling up that right side of the Not picture. At all. Not at all. Nothing. Uh -huh. So you want to make unless sure Unless you've got a point light source that you know you can't bring in. Right. Typically, it's the sun. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that way, because uh, uh, today's cameras seem to retain the shadow information a little better than uh, the highlights. The highlights are absolutely gone. Right. Uh, whereas the shadows might retain it, but you start building up some grain, noise, whatever you want right, to call it. Right, right. So, uh, so you, you shoot a little dark, basically. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there, that simplifies <laughs> it, right? <laughs> it's, it's not one button processing, but uh, just looking at bridge, the controls you have over what that image should look like, uh, especially if you're, you're, you're dealing with uh, uh, multiple uh, lights, uh, Kelvin temperature lights, uh, the yellows, orange, all in one. You can control all that post-processing for right. most of them. Right, that's true. And, and that's only if you're shooting raw is what you're saying. Yes, so yes. Shooting raw. So that, that's number one. <laughs> number, number one, one shoot, shoot raw. What I have get? to look what at else? my notes, I'm sorry. That's what I said, I said keep your notes. Because uh, <laughs> my tips might be a little different than than I would, uh, let me see. Ah, uh, that's a biggie. Learn the mechanics of the camera. Okay, what do you mean by that? All right, well, coming up old school, like I have, we, we really only know, uh, I believe, it's three main elements in, in a camera, and that's your shutter speed, the speed of the film, now it's ISO, speed uh -huh. of, uh, uh, and, uh, and your uh, aperture. Right. Okay. But the mechanics of the camera really control all those features. You right. really need to know that as well as you can. If you're shooting always automatic or priority, get away from that. If you really want to learn photography, Shoot in and, and I shouldn't say learn photography, you want to take it to the next step. Experiment. Uh, if you're not comfortable, don't do a job that you have to have that way. Right. Learn it before you start implementing it, but you'll learn a lot by doing that. So shooting in manual, you feel like... I, I shoot a lot in manual. Uh, uh, I shoot almost, I would say 99.9% .9 in manual. Yeah. And by the way, that's the first class in the four weeks to proficiency. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta throw my plug in there. <laughs> but it is, I mean, it's not as hard as some people make it no, seem. No, no. Uh, it, it can seem... Just like you said, there's well, only three components th there's to shooting three in manual. There's three main components, and one affects the other two. Yep. Okay, you move this one, it affects these two, and right. so on and so forth. So that's how you really get your balance. That's what uh, automatic aperture and automatic shutter and priority and all that, that's all that's really trying to do. It doesn't do it well right. all the time, as you well know. Yeah, well, I'm a control freak. <laughs> <laughs> and so I don't want the camera making any decisions for me. I'm exactly. making the decisions. Exactly. <laughs> so there we, we cross two major things with cameras. We're not going to let the firmware of the camera dictate what that image is going to look like. And by that you're saying, by shooting in, when you shoot in JPEG, basically your camera's processing your picture for you. Okay, so that's okay. the first thing. And, so and, and another raw. way I like to explain that is we have the digital darkroom. Okay, back in the days of film, we usually sent it out and somebody decided, much like firmware, what it was going to look like. Right. Uh, now you have that control. Use yeah. it. It's big. It's very big. Okay, and so shoot in raw, shoot in manual. 
uh, a learn manual. I learn it. Yeah. Uh, there are instances where I do not use manual in that if there's a lot of action. Right. Uh, uh, sports photography. I would shoot in shutter priority just because I know I need the free or a uh, bird mm -hmm. because I want to control right. that and so on and so yeah. forth. So, but manual will teach you that pretty That's, quickly. And it, it's funny because I, I'm not opposed to those settings, the automatic settings, but I don't think, I think you should learn in manual because you get late. Human beings are lazy people, and yeah. we're lazy. We don't pay attention if you don't need to. Right. right. So this way you and that, need that's to. that's if you want to get serious with photography. If you're yeah. Even if you're going into the business, that's claiming you're getting serious. Right. Don't just go into business and say, I can put it on automatic for everything, yeah. and you're, you're going to have a lot of unhappy customers. Sure are. All right, what so, else you got? Uh, I got to take a peek again, because let me see. Uh, la, la, la. Oh, <laughs> of course, this is very big, too. All right, you're doing all this. You're shooting raw, and you learn the mechanics, and now you're going to your dark room. Well, do you calibrate your monitor? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> That's very big, and calibration can come in many ways. You can buy hardware, dense tometers, or actually, th that's the more accurate way of... And, and it's that's all like a color monkey? Yeah, or yeah uh, I forget What's what that I called? Use. A dense I use dense tometer. Ooh, I you didn't, don't know what a dense... I didn't know that word. I ah. thought you did film. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the days of film, we used ah. dense tometer on negatives to help us get into the ballpark ah. for the exposure, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, anyway, it'll do that automatically, but you really don't have to go that far. You can also do a, what I call a rough calibration, and Photoshop typically will put a, uh, uh, in your control panel, will put something to help you calibrate that monitor or make the adjustments. And then you get something that we've called for years, a Shirley. Mm -hmm. A Shirley is nothing more than a photographic uh, print that will usually have a portrait of some nice looking gal. I've never seen with a woman, nice man. I'm sorry <laughs> for all you ladies out there. And then it'll have color gradients and it'll also have the black to white steps in that. Mm -hmm. And you basically uh, will look at your monitor, look at this using the Photoshop uh, control in your, and, and you would manually adjust uh, your monitor to get it close. That's what, when we first went digital, Exactly. The lab sent us yes. those and uh, said, this is what our lab prints. Make sure your monitor looks like these same colors or and, something. And, and, and if you want to get a Shirley, well, just use that as your uh, uh, Google uh, search word and, you'll, and then go to images and you'll see thousands of Shirleys. Oh, that's funny. So, um, Any other tips? Uh, let me see. I'm trying to keep this not too big. Uh, and the, the last one, uh, well, there's actually two. Uh, one thing that's been essential for my career is learning about flash photography. Obviously. Okay. <laughs> Without it, I could not be doing what I'm doing today. And I should say that the movie industry doesn't use flash. So how do they get these crazy lighting? Yeah. Well, they're using hot lights, the Smith and Victors. I used to use them years ago for stills. and. They, they were focused lights. You didn't need a spot grid and all this, all this other stuff, but they're not very portable or anything. So right. really, it, it, it's learning and budget about... budget-wise, yeah. speed lights might be a little less money. Well, yeah, <laughs> the speed light's still expensive, but if you get a uh, 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 off-brand version, right. they're pretty good, too. And then, you know... And the cost comes down and by... And once you start understanding flash and shooting in a manual, you don't need to buy the expensive flashes. Exactly. Exactly. By the way, flash third class in the four weeks to proficiency. <laughs> Sorry, he just keeps opening the door. <laughs> Can't help it, I guess. <laughs> and, and I guess my last tip, and th this is the way I've developed my career, pick a topic. It might be nothing more than uh, how, how to better utilize a specific lens you have. Learn that. Pick another topic. Learn oh. that. Pick another. Don't stop. Don't get complacent. That's really good advice. And... Uh, but that's been my career, and I was fortunate. I landed in the photo lab. Uh, I had everything. I, I had old time people that their first cameras were the speed graphics with flash bulbs. Okay, wow. uh, and I still have. I actually did some of that when I first started there. 
And I don't know if you remember the first portable flashes. No, I don't. Oh know. God, they were horrible. They were horrendous. Oh you know, my and God. We graduated to these big speed graphics, and you put the film holders in for PR with these they called automatic strobes, wow. and it still didn't work that well. You still had to calculate distance and all this other stuff. So it's a lot easier now. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> not always. Wow, that is, you're so fascinating. All right, I um, you got anything? We've got just a couple minutes. What about any mistakes that you think that people should watch out for in general? Uh, uh, mistakes for me is more relating to my clients. Oh. Okay, uh, this, this is a client relationship, and the client could be you're, you're shooting pictures of your husband or your kids or whatever. You need to relate to them in, in one way of relating to your kids. Well, you're standing up here, your kid's down here, and we're used to talking to them from up here. Well, that's not really relating to them. Right. If they're down here, get down to their eye level. Cats, you're shooting a picture of a cat. You gonna shoot it from up here? Well, everybody does that, and it looks like a cat. All my get pictures down of to my cat, I get down to her level, and she, yeah. gives, she gives me those cat <laughs> eyes, you know? Well, then you gotta keep up with them, and usually it's better with dogs. <laughs> yeah, well, one thing I, you know, it's this, I got the, um, oh, you know, you can do the remote oh, with yeah. the cell phone. That's how yeah. you get pictures of the cat, because I have to make sure she's, I catch, catch indeed, her off guard. Indeed, so. indeed, indeed. Uh, but, that, that, it, uh, but with clients, it's the same thing. Uh, I had to teach myself to listen, even though I didn't agree with what they were saying. Yeah. Um, because it's my profession, not every client's going to respect that you might know a little more than them, yes. even, <laughs> at, e even at the experience level I have, and I'm sure you have, uh, it, it, you yeah, people tell you what to do and they don't, I mean, for me, it's lighting, always lighting. They want to take their portraits at noon or something and it's like, exactly. And, and then they don't understand that even, exactly. you know, even if I can, and I can, I, I mean, I'm pretty good at lighting. I could take a portrait at noon and make it look good. Yes. However, if they want it on the beach, here with our white sand, they're going to be squinting. Yeah. So I can't do anything about yeah. that. So yeah, it's hard because I, I do have some strong-willed customers. <laughs> okay, but in retrospect, you also have to have a commanding presence. And this particularly shows with groups. Yeah. Okay, we were talking about cats. Well, what do you think a group shot is? It's hurting cats. Yeah. You have to be commanding, making sure people stop yakking with each other, that you can see everybody's head. But there's in always a nice and friendly ha way. Ha I don't know if you do groups, but there's okay. always somebody hiding in the group. Why? I know. Why uh, do they do that? Well, they're shy or they don't like the way they look or whatever, and you always have to drag them out. Now, I've shot in groups as large as, what, 600 people. Wow. Oh, yeah. This is, and, you know, you typically will be yelling at that point when a group's that big. Get a megaphone. <laughs> uh, the best groups to shoot are in the military. Because oh. you find the uh, uh, the sergeant, you say, this is what I want. And he just starts barking orders. I love that. That's <laughs> great. That's great. Uh, so what's next for David Sussman? Wow. Um, well, I, I'm actually in a retired state now, believe it or not. You're but working pretty hard for a retired <laughs> guy. I know. Well, the problem with me is I'm a junkie of gear, you know, a nerd, whatever you want to call it. I love the technologies out there. I got drones, I got the big lenses, video cameras, you know, I, I do it all. I do special effects and videos. Oh, so well. you got to support your Ma habit. Matter of fact, <laughs> keep an eye out for one of the coolest videos, three minute promos of Punta Gorda about to hit the streets. Um, it's something I built without request. I decided, you know, I was getting antsy about the kind of videos I typically see, the talking heads, and I says, wait a minute, we can do better than that, and I just threw something together, and you know, I got emotional when I watched oh it. Oh my it was God. really cool. But it's not, it's not out yet? It's not out yet, it's about to hit the street. Uh, I, I, I basically gave it to my wife, she went around, pimped the video for me. Pimped. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everybody that sings, it, it gets emotional, and it, all it is is music, stills, and some really cool video sequences. Oh my God, I can't yeah. wait to see it. Now, how will we be able to see that? Will that be well, on the website? At, at, uh, that's what I was going to get to first. Uh, it has to be posted by the client first. 
I'm not sure at what how much time they want exposure before I post on Facebook. Okay, and so um, just keep following yeah, you on it, Facebook. It, That's it might the be the first of the year is what I suspect okay. because it, it's probably going to go live next week on the Punta Gorda Chamber of Commerce. Okay, is probably the first place you'll see it. Uh, but if you start following me, I'll you'll post it as soon as you there. can. Yeah, okay, exactly. cool. Okay, uh, all right. So now your website is. DW. Okay, uh, I have several sites. I have dwsussman.com. Okay. And that's S U S S M A N. Uh huh. Um, and that's my main site that I've kind of been lackadaisical with, but it gives you a good overall. Uh, there is a section on tips. I, I went through your website. Oh. It's a very, I mean, it, 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 yeah, maybe you haven't updated, but it's a good website. Uh, it's thank got you. a lot of good stuff on it. Yeah. yeah um, it was. To me, it's dated. That, that site's probably 10 years old. Yeah. I've got another site called ChoiceGraphX.com. Okay. Uh, com. That will get into all kinds of other things. Uh, uh, interactive media, uh, back during the Flash. I was big into Flash. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows what Flash was, but it was interactive uh, 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 media for the web. Okay. And that kind of died a little. And now they're using something else. So I kind of let that go. Uh, I have some Macromedia stuff. Just all kinds of it, stuff. It's cool stuff. And it, that's choice. Choice, just the way you spell it. Graph, G R A P H X. X dot com. Dot com. Okay. A lot of cool stuff. And there. then of course Facebook.com slash David Sussman. Right. Okay. Right. And uh, and that's where your most recent stuff is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I, I buy a lot of domain names, and I'm about to go nuts in building some new sites for different purposes. Okay. I, I plan on building an e-commerce site to sell some of my stuff. Okay. Uh, because I don't have a storefront. I just don't want to be nailed down to one particular spot. Don't need to anymore. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, and actually, nobody really knows this. I hope my wife doesn't get upset. Uh -huh. We're getting ready to move back to Panama City. We're selling here. Oh, my God. But we're coming back as snowbirds. <laughs> snowbirds from Panama City. That's yeah, so yeah. funny. <laughs> Panama Actually, City, we, Florida. We, we not call <laughs> that a snowflake. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Well, I, you know, I, for the first time, I went to the Panhandle this, this June. I'd never been Did to the you Panhandle. Go to the beaches? I went everywhere, and uh, I was so surprised because their season is the summer because it's so slow here in June. There's nothing going on, yeah, but it yeah. was busy up there. Well, it, it, well, you got Panama City, and then you got Panama City Beach. Yep. Uh, and there are two. One is more industrialized, right. if you will, and, we went and the out other is more uh, tourist. For, yeah, I went everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's a gorgeous area. Uh, we have a place right on the bay up there oh, on East nice. Bay. And there might be one home, uh, well, one home, uh, there's probably 15 homes on that whole section across. It's Tyndall Air Force Base, so they're not ever going to build there. Nice. So I have like a five mile view directly across, 15 miles that way, and about six to 10 going the other. We got this beautiful panoramic view. Oh. We kind of miss it some. And you uh, like to fish. I love the fish. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to have David's websites and his Facebook, a link to his Facebook page on the understandphotography.com website, as well as the show notes from today's show. And while you're on the understandphotography.com website, be sure to subscribe to the show. It's a, there's a little button at the end of, I think, almost every post that says, please subscribe to the show or subscribe to the newsletter. We send a newsletter out once a month with photo tips and what we've got coming on and things like that. Um, next week's guest is Greg A.G. Now, Greg, I met him through the Professional Photographers Group, and he was he's an amazing graphic artist. But he's since kind of moved on to architectural photography. So I wanna, we're going to talk a little bit about architectural photography and how he made that change. Uh, Thank you, David Sussman, for being my guest on today's Lucky 13. <laughs> I think we made it through with no technical Yay. problems. <laughs> Thank you for watching the Understand Photography Show. I'm Peggy Farron, and we'll see you next Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Get up!